Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of the Jam and Cheese Show. Cheese, what are you doing? You're looking real good at the moment, Jimmy. Thanks. You just noticed the oh. shoes. Ah, the... yeah, well, I've just come from a presentation that I gave. Um, mm -hmm. Shameless plug, but yeah, that's why I've got the pants on as well. Change oh, the shirt. Can't polish a turd. <laughs> no, but you can roll it in glitter. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I like wasn't a... saying you're a turd. No, well, yeah. But if you were a turd, it'd be one of those dried up white... Dog poos, you know those ones? They get real white. I have seen a caught, been a very long time since I've seen a dog poo. Uh, what a white dog poo, sorry. I saw, it actually f pisses me off that, like, if you're a do dog owner, clean the shit up. Oh, mate. They, um, when we were walking from the, the club, uh, the field to the stadium today, I saw like four poos on the, on the way, and I was Who really, it was really getting on my nerves. It's funny. It, um, Victor's house, he yells at people like from his balcony because there's a like a, there's a park in front of his house. Ah. Oi, <laughs> pick it up! <laughs> yeah, good. It, like, if you want to own a dog, yeah, part of the dance is you got to pick the shit up. Exactly. No excuses. What if you don't have a plastic bag? Unlucky. <laughs> find, be resourceful. Yeah, find, find a, a leaf. leaf. <laughs> Take your shirt off. Yeah. Take a sock off. <laughs> Take your undies off. <laughs> Take a bra off. Oh, welcome to the bar round. Mm. <laughs> Modes of transport we're talking about, uh, or walking, but yeah, we we're just talking about you and your car and your yeah. dice, dicing with death. My car's been on zero kilometres, um, and I've managed to get to and from training twice while, it on, while it's on zero. And then we, I think we were discussing, um, if you're driving on the highway, do you use less fuel? Then when you're stop start in the city? Uh, I think you use less fuel and stop starting. My dad used to say 56 miles an hour is the optimum speed in fifth gear. <laughs> <laughs> or the most efficient. Can I get kilometers please? We're not in bloody, uh, we're not in Europe. Well, <laughs> if you can be bothered working that out. <laughs> no, dad used to trundle along and be like, dad, can we speed up? He's like, it's the most efficient way to drive, son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but dad, it's... <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Dads and saving money. Oh, God. Yeah. But where, where did he pull that fact from? I've never. Well, <laughs> I, I believe him because he um, he's a man of science, mm. so a physics teacher. Uh, so I imagine he would know the most efficient way of driving and the speed. I wasn't oh, going to argue with I'm him. I'm not going to argue with him. I wasn't going to argue with him. I was just like, Dad, can you just hurry up? I would love to argue with them, but I'm not going to. No. Not today. Um, let's get on to some of the more bigger issues. Yeah, you know, we got, we, got, we got loads to get through, and we're <laughs> dribbling about uh, dog poo and no petrol tanks or no petrol in the tank. But actually, before we get it, how, how are you speaking of petrol in the tank? Is it Are you fueled up? Oh, I'm fueling up. I'm definitely You're fueling allowed up. to eat now. I was battling the first week. The first week, because I went 11 days on the couch – Straight into just getting wapooed, just absolute. I don't know what that means, but wapooed, wapooed, absolutely getting smashed. And um, I was feeling like a victim for a while. I think I mentioned that yeah. last podcast, but now I'm absolutely fucking firing. Ooh, <laughs> excuse the language. Ready to I'm shredding how, up. How, how I'm shredding up. There's a little bit of a six pack coming through. Oh, how good is that? What you can see. <laughs> I've think, checked. I've checked yeah. it out. I think the boys are still counting how many times I lift the shirt up. Do you roll, do you roll your um, ab, uh, your stomach um, fat down so you can really see it? Do well, you yeah, do, pull, pull it down. I'm not going to admit that I do that. Uh, I've heard. I've heard of someone doing that. I do that. <laughs> when I'm feeling just go. It's there. It's there. It's there. If only I stopped eating all that shit. <laughs> it I'll would do everything, be there. but I'll do everything but work hard and mm. eat well to get yeah, ripped, Matt. I don't mind training. It's the eating. I, uh, <laughs> like, I'm a just the booze isn't good either. No, the booze doesn't help. But mate, I just consume like a ridiculous amount of food. Probably it's the main reason why mm. I exercise. Is so Dale Fanukin. I've never seen a man. Oh, I I just have this theory. He must take the biggest dumps because what goes in must mm. come out, and that man puts a lot in. A lot. Was he big it's on his like banana sandwiches it. when he was at the storm? Because at the dogs, he loved a banana sandwich. No, but we, when we get those buffets, like it's almost like 
Dale's having a competition with everyone else. Well, he probably could, is. See, yeah, exactly. Dale's been Dale. Everyone, like he's trying to have a competition with everyone. How much food you can actually physically put on the plate, mm. and yeah. then devour it. He's a big eater. Also, a very loud talker on the phone. <laughs> Was his husky voice? Mate, John, Josh Jackson used to say like, Jimmy, how you going, mate? <coughs> Josh Jackson used to live with him and he'd say like, Dale would go outside on the balcony to take like, you know, if he was like a personal call, it was like, Dale, what are you doing? I can hear you anyway. <laughs> like, you de you're defeating the purpose of going in the, in a quiet room or going outside, you, you're just loud. He does have a really loud laugh. Mm. <laughs> For someone that's struggling to talk, he's really... Yes. All right. He finds his... Right, come on. <laughs> uh, sorry, how many... How long are you off? Uh, I think I'll be back before the bye. Don't take... Oh, me. so you got three You got three games and then the bye. So... Yeah. So you go night camp. That'll be six weeks. So that's, that's best case scenario. Yeah, nice. They said eight, but um, we're healing up pretty well. Yeah, because they need you, hey? Mm. I don't think. Oh, maybe they need something. We need something. Um, but yeah, hopefully when I get back, I'm firing on all cylinders mm -hmm. as well. Um, been eating pretty much steaks, steak, eggs, and avocado every day, twice a day. That's pretty much my only. The diet they got me on is pretty mad. So, mm. I'm get enjoying that six it. pack. Yeah. Uh, Dragons looks like they've chosen Shane Flanagan. Did they choose him, or did they just <laughs> that was? That was pretty much the only option. Oh, I think there's other people in the frame, but but like NRL quality, <clears throat> mm. proven coaching is it? Uh, well, Hasler, Flanagan, oh, yeah, you know, uh, Hornby, Young. So there was a few. I've just been mistaken. But um, it's in, have you had much to do with Flanagan? No, I. I actually haven't. I, the, the only thing I have with them is the 2016 Sharks team. They were just mm. an unbelievable team. So um, built on hard work and, you know, I think that's that's what the Dragons can expect yeah. in, in my eyes. Yeah. A gritty sort of dogfight sort of performances is what that I, I guess – can remember of the shark, that Sharks team. Yeah, he had some talent in there as well. Um, he's got a lot of areas, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of areas that he needs to to fix up, and it's a huge, a huge job. I think, look, there was fractions of the board that were dead against him. That appears to have been resolved, but it's it's a bit weird that because he has had two roles there in the past. Yeah. So he was assistant coach while I was there. And then he became roster manager. Is that is that a thing? Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it was a thing. <laughs> I don't know if it's to do with recruitment. Um for me, probably the biggest challenge um that Shane Flanagan faces is uh dealing with decision makers. Yeah. And it would have been interesting to see uh, part of those negotiations on who gets final say in area X or area Y. Yeah. So I think the Dragons board would be wise to just hand over control to him or a very significant amount of control Yeah. when it comes to the decision-making process. Like they can't be butting heads over player retention recruitment. They can't be butting heads over you know, stupid little things that sometimes these, that that that, that can happen. The Dragons fans have, have been through enough crap. So, and so bef previously before Shane Flanagan, is that what happened? Like the board has a lot of... A lot of power. A lot of power? Yeah. I, well, guess, when, the, I guess the Roosters be similar, but it's been working for them. Yeah, but the board have a lot of power with the Roosters, but I imagine they don't interfere with Trent's... No, no, yeah. ...decisions. Mm. So... Well, for example, when uh, in my th th towards the end of my time there, Mary, Mary McGregor um, kept his job, but it was on the basis of they had between um, McGregor, Dean Young, and Flanagan, they got to vote on each position. 
on who I'm picking the team, like, and that will come what? from the board, mate. Exactly. Yeah. See, well, do, do they obviously? Are they seeing that this isn't working? This the system. Well, this is some of the questions that get asked, mate. But there's a lot of people there that, you know, whether or not they govern through through self interest or they don't trust people, or whatever it may be. But I think the most important um, aspect of the conversation is are. Uh, are they on the same hymn sheet? Are they in agreement now? Before, like, an, an almost an understanding of, okay, well, what's it going to come down to when a situation arises? Because you'd be, you'd be naive and stupid. In fact, you'd be an idiot to think that a situation won't arise where we need to make a tough decision. Now, what's that going to come down to? What's, what structure have we got in place? What's our decision-making process look like? Is it all on Fano? And then it's on the coach? Is it all on the board? Is it, you know, a vote? Like they've got this crazy thing in their constitution that the board has to be unanimous. Now that, yeah. you, when you're setting yourself up as an organization, that all sounds great. Let's all be unanimous. <laughs> that, that's how we're going to make decisions when we're all together. But like, it doesn't always work like that. Oh, no. And, you know, I think for me, I've, I've, I've thought about this and this is my sort of summary of it where, Bad things will happen. It's not all going to be perfect. Um, and, and sometimes football clubs can do everything in their power to be successful. Yep. But sometimes, <clears throat> and, that, and that happens and that's unfortunate. But then sometimes they almost set themselves up to fail. And I think you think about it like a dog. A dog knows the difference from when it's being kicked to when it gets accidentally tripped over. <laughs> and for too long, that club has been kicked yeah, and uh, I guess it's pretty tough because Flano goes in now. I think it's going to be for season twenty twenty four. He's going to finish off his time at Manly. Okay, that that's good for him because if he was if he was to go in now and then the board expect big things or big change so early without any, I guess, of his coaching structure being imprinted um, throughout the season it would have been tough. But that's probably the best decision he's yeah. made. If if that's the if that's the case, um, a preseason under him being able to, I guess. Yeah, start in 2024. Yeah, yeah that's mm. perfect. Mm. And even that, again, about, about like, okay, well, who who decides the team around him? Yeah. Like, Flano knows he's had a, he's been in the room before, so he, he'll know who, who he'll want to keep and who not. Yeah. And then, again, does that come back to the board? Yeah. Do the board say, no, he's got to stay? Yeah. Or does Flano say, well, you know, like have those conversations now? Before we end up with a, a shit show. I wonder if Shane Flanagan gets on the phone to Ben Hunt this year. Well, apparently they've already... Well, I actually read some comments from Flano about... Um, he, he had a, it'd been spoken about he'd had a conversation saying he'd be the seven if I was there. But it was like, basically, they live on the same street. Yeah. And they see each other at the same cafe. And he's like, oh, you know, a bit sort of tongue-in-cheek. But I yeah. think... Um, you know, Flano likes his senior players. He likes his experienced players. Yeah. Um, so I think he'd do all he can to, to keep Ben Hunt happy. Um, and that's what he did in order to win a premiership. I would just say, though, that I don't know if uh, uh, that should be the focus on how am I going to build a premiership winning team just yet. Yeah, I think that's a long way away. Yeah, And the Dragons fans and, and everybody's got to realise there's got to be an element of patience there. I think that's minimum minimum four years away yeah now is, is ben hunt still going to be at the club in four years like age will tell you he won't you'd almost want to treat it like um like a new team like like wayne bennett build a culture mm. once you've got that culture built first year maybe even second year once you've got that culture built the foundations in place then you can think about genuinely being a, a, prim a premiership threat yeah i don't think wayne thought he was genuinely going to be a premiership threat this year but he's, he's picked the team and built a culture um pretty early and i think that's why he's such a good coach and i think that's what that flanagan's going to have to do because there's going to be a lot of changes um to that team i'm assuming well i think what the the beauty of wayne when he was down there he basically told the board you stay well, with, he, you, he would be the boss yes yeah, you, you stay in your lane yeah don't you come down here to wollongong 
So finally, if he can do that, but then, you know, I think looking at the roster, I think there's there's an ups, there's a they're not playing their potential just yet. Yeah. So we can get an upside in that and then build off that, yeah. which is a, a positive sign. So if you get a good coach in there with that current roster, yes, he'll look to implement change like happens every year. I don't think they're going to land a, a marquee player for next season, mm. but he'll get an, um, he should be able to get an immediate response. And I worked with him in 2020. I was really impressed with him. You can tell he's a first grade coach. Like yeah. he acts like a first grade coach, which is half the battle sometimes. Is is feeling like you belong. He, yes, he's got that experience, but he he needs to not. Well, in my opinion, not focus on the the premiership, but focus on just getting some better, mm. more consistent results. And like you say, a bit of a change of culture and attitude mm. down there. Yeah, and hopefully the board doesn't interrupt too much because I, I remember when I was in Melbourne. The board wanted to get rid of me um, after I had my little mishap with the oh. the scandal into the um, into the thing. The the board wanted to get rid of me. A few people were alluded to that, but then Craig didn't want me gone. So who's the overall boss there? And then obviously Craig is, and them not interfering with what Craig wants in his team. I guess you got to have that respect and knowledge that that coach knows what he's talking about with footy. I know what I'm doing here. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. I was yeah. obviously keen to stay. Yeah, young um, men will make mistakes. Yeah. So like if the board if the board wants someone gone, like maybe discuss it with the coach first. Hopefully. Yeah, it's it's interesting that that such a powerful organization like Melbourne and, and one that um you know has been through a lot in the in their short history. But again, like it came back to, they were a decision. But he, yeah, he <coughs> like he may not make all the decisions behind the closed doors, but mm. he is the the boss there. Like, well, again, like, <laughs> and for th- good th- reason. Th- we'll, 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 we'll think about think about that and the message it sends to you in the playing group. Mm. So you're indebted to Craig now. I've always so yeah yeah you're indebted to him. Yep. Like you owe him big time. Yeah, and then the other players go like look. He knows we're not perfect. We're not going to look to mess up, but he's going to have our backs. Yeah, for like sure. how about that for a oh. bit of team culture? Like yeah. that's amazing. Go on forever and ever for all the, all the times he's had my back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but what, what, Wayne, Wayne's the same. Like, yeah, he has his players' backs. Yeah, like he, he understands that people will mess up and make mistakes. Young men playing this game. Yeah, like and yeah. Uh, he's and the a master ser- of bringing it all back yeah. on him, and a certain personality type that you know attracted to risk, attract, attracted to danger. Well, it's what Wayne said in the media recently when they were like, "Oh, do you want, um, do you want to go? Are you going to go look for some signings for your injuries coming up?" He's like, "Why would I, why would I sign new people when the people I've got are going so well?" Mm. Like, when, when, if you're a player at the Redcliffe, you go, oh, "Thanks, yeah, like, you're the man." Those are the messages. Like, yeah, you're yeah. like, "Wow, yep." He's the man. <laughs> yeah, he sure is. Um, <clears throat> Origin teams are in. New South Wales, big changes. I think five all up, two because of injury. Yeah. Um, three selections. What did you think about um, Hines going from 14 to then that spot becoming available at seven to, you know, Completely yeah, well, just out the team or out the squad. As a Queensland fan, I'm pretty happy about it. But as one of Nico's best mates, I'm pretty disappointed that he can go from next man up to not even in the picture. Like, um, it's disappointing. Obviously, the result from the weekend didn't really help his his cause. But it's just. Do you think like, that really mattered? Though? Yeah. Well, if he performed, I don't know. Maybe he had his mind made up. Because uh, the connection of from <laughs> Lebanon, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's been one of the but the I, talking points, hasn't it? Oh, really? <laughs> he's got a good relationship from Moses from his time at Lebanon, and I think <laughs> city the city team. <laughs> like, oh, guess yeah. who? My, guess who the guest is on on the podcast next week? Who? My name. Oh, <laughs> yeah. got a great relationship. <laughs> She knows nothing about football, but yeah. <laughs> now bless her. No. Um, but yeah, obviously I'm I'm biased towards Nico because I think he's done enough in the last eighteen months to be able to 
um, wear the Blues jersey. And I know how much it means to him. So um, it's pretty disappointing for me and I guess it'd be more disappointing for him. Yeah, I'm... I was completely shocked, like even going into this latest round where, you know, the talk was, oh, well, at the very start of the week, it was like, oh, it's a three horse race. And I was kind of like, now this is just the media having something, they're just, it's something to talk about. There's yeah. there's no race, it's Nico's. And then got towards the weekend, it's like, oh, I think Moses has got his nose in front. And I'm like, no, surely not. Because you know, you look at it and you go, well, if Nathan Cleary sustained this hamstring hamstring injury before game one, who plays seven? Yeah, Nicker. Nicker. Yeah. No questions asked. Yeah. But then he sustains it just after, and then all of a sudden it's a topic for debate. I'm like, it, it's not a topic for debate. Like, yeah. Hines, Hines is there. Yeah. Like, he's the next cab off the rank. And, you know, all this talk of, oh, we'll – who can handle this pressure? And, you know, they were talking, oh, Adam Reynolds knows some corp inside out. It's like, what? <laughs> what on earth? He, it, it, that was a bizarre thing. Like, oh, anyway, but like all this pressure, it's like, we don't think that Nathan Cleary would be under pressure if he was fit. Yeah. Like pressure's going to be coming. News, whoever whoever they pick, I, I think. Well, you think but, Mitch Moses is not going to be under pressure? Yeah. <laughs> like, When's the last him? time he played? Is this his debut? So Mitchell Moses, he has played before in a in a dead rubber origin, uh, a game that they lost, but he was actually all right in that game. But I don't know. For for me, and I, and I like Mitchell Moses. I like what he brings. Yeah. Um, good lad on and off the field. Mm. But like, and it's nothing against him. But I just, I, you know, I, I'm just perplexed at why yeah. why just, there was no Hines and yeah. I just don't think like if you're going back. 12 months, 18 months, I just don't think Mitch has played as good as Nick. But what Mitch does have, bro, is a ridiculous kick yeah. that can put Queensland, you know, on the on the back foot for a long time. Yeah. That's that's maybe what they're going for. Because I've played against them for Para. I think Parramatta and Penrith are the only teams that I've got a like bad record against, like a pretty bad – well, Penrith's not too bad because they had them bad years at the start, but – Para for some reason they just he just knows how to put the ball all the way down the other end no matter how the set what goes mm. and I think um, Freddie might have seen something in that yeah so um, but yeah yeah maybe it is the the, the kicking game the dominant kicking game yeah N- and that's gonna be well because they need a dominant kicker yeah that that could be the barometer of him yeah. being a s- success yeah um. But either way, it's... But it's, I'm clutching at straws to find something. <laughs> yeah. Because then uh, Adam Reynolds is probably the best kicker in the yeah. game. Well, and Nico's got a, a good kicking game mm. as well. But, I mean, look, you've got to feel sorry for a man that's so vocal and so passionate for a long time yep. and who's played um, outstanding football for for the Sharks and Storm over the past couple of seasons. Um, Reese Robson has come on to the bench as a utility. I love that. So it, it looks that. as if... Uh, the old plan of two hookers is now back. Yeah, well, see, I, but the only problem I had, and I was saying this to you before, was that Uppy and Cook are very, very different players. Mm-hmm. Whereas Reese Robson and, and Cook aren't that different. They both love to run, um, fit. I think I just love, I've really had, um, not a man crush, but I love Reese Robson's game. Because I feel like it's similar to mine, so I like, and he's a little mongrel. He's not like he's not a spot. Yeah, he's not. A guy, not. He's not a guy that's going to make sixty tackles a game. Because if you run at him, he's going to, you know, hit you, mm. hit you hard. Same with Mitch Kenny. Those type of players, I, I like those players, and um, I'm glad that he got a spot in New South Wales. Yeah, yeah I was I was really pleased from. I had a bit to do with um, Reese Robson at the Dragons. Oh, Dragons, yeah, yeah, like great lad and. He was stuck behind Cameron McInnes. And yep. if it hadn't been for that, I think he would have loved to have stayed. Obviously, you know, had he had known. What Cameron. are those dogs? Bull Terriers? The yes. ones with the long nose. <laughs> that is. He looks long. exactly like him. Yeah. <laughs> but like. <laughs> the little eyes. And the- <laughs> <laughs> um, no disrespect, of course. No. <laughs> okay. um, but look, he's, he's done so well going up to Townsville. Mm. Um, made a name for himself. And yeah, I guess not to just put 
bit of extra shit on the Dragons, but there's another one they, they got away. Yeah. Or that, that got away. Uh, he's now playing for a state. Um, they can say he developed or they developed him though, but so so pleased for him. Um be interesting to see how he handles the the, the week in the preparation and yeah. It wouldn't surprise me to see New South Wales. What's he like? You've had a bit met of legend of a bloke. Yeah. Yeah, legend of a yeah. bloke. Yeah, really, really top lad. Because i I'm good one of my best friends is Scott Drinkwater, obviously. We lived together for a long time and um they say he's a he always tells me how he's a man of a lot of detail, like always gets the little things done yeah. in training, you know, the recovery, the prehab, all that stuff. So Yeah, but he's a, he's a top bloke as well. Personally. He didn't say that actually. Drinky said he's a <coughs> shit bloke. Yeah, personally <laughs> de- <laughs> delighted for him and um, be interesting to see if him and, uh, and Cook play at the same time and have that two yep. dummy half approach, yep. um, which I think they, they probably will. Uh, some of the other bench, uh, Stefano has come in. He was 18th um, man last time, yep. but a bit of a surprise. Like I'll, that was probably one of them that was, yeah, quite surprising for me personally. I thought Spencer Lenu was was in. I, mm. I, I love what he brings. Obviously, <laughs> he bought some on the weekend. He was not happy. Oh, he was not happy, bro. I was at the game and it, he's oh, he's he was going off. You wanted him in the car. I love that. He, uh, you know what? When you see that red mist, like he, do you know what got me? He he got sprayed in the face with a water bottle, and he didn't blink once. He just copped the water I'm straight to, to the f- mate. See, I want to watch that back. That's bro, brilliant. If bro, you, he if just copped the water straight to the face, and then bottle. Not even a flinch, just just hit his head and just like went off. I was like, "What is go- that?" Is a man of extreme focus, <laughs> but yeah, it's gonna be awkward one at um, that, training. It, yeah, it, well, you watch, but they'll end up being best mates. Yeah, mm. I'd be if I were you, I'd be staring the pot like just first day. Yeah. Like, come on, Mate, you other. two are gonna have to have a massive fight. Yeah, you two. I imagine like the first team drink or team <laughs> camp together. Well, like, boys, oh, have you? Heard, hey, Jared, have you heard what he said? <laughs> What? What's that? You, you was too scared to go. Oh, oh you, you wouldn't. You walked off first. <laughs> All right, just saying. Uh, but yeah, big Stefano Utoya Kamanu yep. comes in. Like he's doing great for the Tigers, um, and a lot of competition for those middles. Um, he got the gets the nod over Campbell Gillard, who was really good yesterday on his return. Or oh, sorry, on Monday, Saifiti and Pangai Junior. And Spencer Lenu, it's yeah, big call. Mm. He is a big body. Mm. He's a very big body. I just, I wonder what, because the thing is, we don't know what Freddie's plan is or yeah. what he's thinking. So, I think Stefano is <coughs> a good pick. Um, RCG would have been very handy. Mm. He's a good player. Yeah, he is. I guess. Look, we're dissecting this team now, but I think there's one thing that. They just need the W, and yeah. it doesn't matter how. Like whatever their plan is, yeah. good luck to them. Um, well, I'm tipping them. You're, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mate, those queens are those back against the wall. I, I just don't think the New South Wales can um, can lose to them this week. Mm. Is it this week? When is it ne- next week? Uh, week tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but mate, like when you look at it, like the. The the or, the origin team selections the the I think the first week most of the chat was around oh there's a few shocks in the Queensland team, but that paid dividends yeah like um hammer saw ha, uh, the, the still, ha, still the, can't get it the hammer in <laughs> for Dane Gegai um there was a couple the, no Christian Welsh R- Walsh Walsh over Pong that created more of the headlines but this. This time it's all New South Wales. It's like, well, Hines isn't playing. Why no Hines? Robson onto the bench. Yeah. Stefano. And then, you know, we've got the three um, players who are going to be under, I guess, an injury cloud. Latrell Mitchell, Cameron Murray, and Liam Martin. Like, I, I don't think Latrell and Cameron Murray are going to be playing until, or oh, sorry, training until Sunday. I, I, if I'm ready, I wouldn't give a damn how long it takes the yeah. child to train. I know he's going to perform. Yeah, loves those big games. Um, it's set up for Latrell, this, this state of origin. Yeah, he's the man. Um, he's 
such a a credit to our game. Our game is blessed to have him, and he, he can do he things. Can go and put he can on do show, things he can only and, he yeah. can do in the whole history of the game. Like he can go and put on a show up there. Mm. And I think he loves disappointing people like like Queensland crowd. I think he'll, he'll love thrive it. off yeah. that one. That I think he'll love it. I think he'll feed and get a bit of. He'll, he'll grow another leg. Yeah, like he he really third will. leg. Third mm. leg. Um, <laughs> Where's that growing? <laughs> <laughs> this is a PG rated show. Jeez. Um, Cameron Murray with the groin. I guess I've had groin issues before. He, he's got a you know trust in, in, in what he's doing and yeah. with the team. But the, the odd thing for me is cells are, are bringing in their own physios. Like, that pisses me off, man. As if you, as if they can't be trusted. Yeah. Like, you think they're going to overrun them. Have they had like, that problem with the, what's it? They're working I, them too I, hard I, on I the camp. Oh, that's such a load of crap. It's not <laughs> even funny. Like, sometimes they... And I, I respect and, and uh, physios and and uh, sports science staff have done so much for me personally, but but there's sometimes I'm like, guys, <laughs> do me a favor, I got this, all right? <laughs> like, just I'll be all right. Yeah. Like no, hundred percent. Like Man, I, I've been almost having like a panic attack if I've you been... go over two Ks, two days. Oh, it's it. We're on D minus. <laughs> yeah. You've run three Ks. Your high speed meters is up. It's like <laughs> at Melbourne, they you have like a meeting before the spine meeting. You have before the captain's run, and they have like the head guy there, Lockie Penfolds, put up how many plays you can have after the sesh, like to go through gameplay, and it's like twelve plays. And it's like, oh, mate, what if we do 14? Are we allowed to do 14? It's like Craig would just go, mate, it's two plays. Of mm. course you could. Mm. It'd be about 50 metres where yeah. we're running. Yeah, well, that's it. Some of them are like, oh, two And he K. gets he gets yeah. angry about it. Yeah, yeah, gets, yeah. Oh, they do. Oh, you want to get them injured then? Yeah. Don't, don't come crying to me it's, when play gets injured. Like, what's mate. the difference between 12 plays and 16 well, plays? Well, mate, like, you know what? Um, unfortunately. I can't believe he's even created a stat that you can only have 12 plays. Mate, I remember some of them like, oh, you can only do 2K today. I'll have, I'll have basically done that in the warm up, and then you have some lads yeah. that do they they th they know they're on the on the clock on the on sorry not on the clock but on the the meter maker yeah and it's like they'll just start like walking up and yeah. down the foot like well, the you know they know when the GPS gets turned on and you see them at warm up <laughs> or like you know when you gather around you're waiting for everyone they see them like walking up and down the field running yeah. and say like, like what good warm up yeah <laughs> oh yeah there's there's 1.5 well, in the bag well the, the thing that those 12 plays is then the spine after getting come up with how are we going to use these 12 plays so you go all right we'll do three off the scrum mm. three scrum and then we'll do three plays off the tap and then we'll do a full set attack in the line yeah it's like mate like just do three full sets mm. like the, the worst thing is is most of the the studies that they get their information from it's not done on rugby league players. It's done on other types of athletes, yeah. which unfortunately they don't mass up, match up. So they have straw man arguments about why we shouldn't run so far. But uh, I'm sure some sports scientists out there are like, what do you know, James? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but anyway, I don't believe South Sydney's you should physios. Go. My dad's a bloody physicist. Yeah, physicist. He a drives physicist. a 56 I was say, miles. I was going to try and tempt it. <laughs> I went physics <laughs> test teacher. <laughs> He drives at 56 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't think South Sydney's staff need to go in there. Uh, Reese Martin, uh, sorry, not Reese Martin, Liam Martin is a big one. Um, after the, the huge... Performance. Yeah, well, he's a great performer, but he had a bad head knock, mate. Yeah. Like... He'll be in. Oh, I know he'll be in. Yeah, he'll and, be in. And I thought I'd do exactly the same. Tommy Turbo, he went in. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> with, with Liam Martin, mate, you think... And I've said this a few times already, but like he hits with the wrong shoulder and he's got the reset restart. And I've done that before. Mm. And you're like, what? Are you? Like you're so pissed off at yourself the next day. Mate, did you see when he chased that grubber and he just, instead of like, in the New South Wales game, and mm. he knew he couldn't make it. So he just dove with his head, just tried to headbutt the guy's leg. It worked, but <clears throat> yeah. it's going to last long. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, the debate. Um, whether he should be protected from himself is, is another one. Obviously, <laughs> the NRL have brought in these. Um, He's a mad. The, the, the stand down policy over uh, or the, the mandatory, um, a medical suspension basically is what it is for people with category ones. And he's going to have to go through a process to pass that. 
and I understand why he would do his utmost to to play, and that's yeah, yeah. I, I understand why he's going. You know, I don't care about my future self. I'm I'm playing in the state of orange. Yeah, so my, my state needs me, and I and I get that stance. Uh, Queensland, any shocks there? Not really. Like like you said, all the headlines are with New South Wales for once in their <laughs> origin careers, but um, <clears throat> yeah, most of them are just injuries, really. Mm. Would you have had Kafusian over uh, no. Nanai? I would if I was picking, mm. just because out of respect. But you can make an argument. Yeah, but it's not, yeah, it's not. It's not like it's a, not major. It's not yeah, it's not like major news. I mean, he hasn't played in four weeks. But mind you, Nanai's not. He's only he played, played on one game. Yeah, yeah, he played one game against yeah. the Storm for you yeah. know, his first game since round nine. So yeah. they won by forty. So. Yeah, <laughs> true. Anyway, I think Queensland are. Good position. Uh, That's how. Actually, back to that. The, the storm, storm beat sharks by what fifty points. Yeah. Sharks beat cowboys by fifty points. Cowboys beat storm by forty points. This comp is ridiculous. When you put it, well, I already knew this comp was ridiculous, but that is a great point. Oh, mate, Luke the, the, Kerry said that today. He was, I was talking about it. He's like, mate. He said that exact stat. I was like, bro, that is ridiculous. Mate, the Cowboys played the Sharks. I was at that game. They were, all, like, yeah. awful. They were awesome <laughs> against the Storm. And then, then like you say, they... It, I just can't believe it. Like, and it annoys me because we've lost the yeah. Sharks. Uh, we've lost the Sharks. We've lost the Cowboys. And when are they going to... Why don't they just play one of those shit games against us? One don't of them, you, don't you hate that? One of them give us forty points. Mm. Oh well. I don't think we've had like an absolute flogging once this year. Like one. No. They just love to turn up against us. It's mm. bloody frustrating. Should isn't Tino it? have been suspended? No. No. It's ball carrying arm. Like, what no. do you like, <laughs> mate? Just watch, watch it. The, Jared but, one was a little bit <laughs> more suspicious. Yeah. Well, man, the the one with Tino, like watching it live, watching it full speed, mm. no one no one knew the incident. No one that even knew. No, what, no one knew yeah. what happened. So Coruscant's come off, and we were like, "Oh, hang on!" And the, we were watching it on screen on the monitor. It's like, "Oh, Coruscant's come off. What's happened there?" Mm. No one knew. Oh, then broken uh, like, jaw. Oh, and then broken jaw. Like, like, oh, Tino's well, a where, Where's it? Where's when did that happen? Yeah. And then you had to go back and saw the replay, and you kind of like. You, only because you reeled out with a tackle. You, well, I remember watching the game. I watched it, and the commentator because they replayed that that mm. thing, and the commentator's like, "Well, that can't be where he broke his jaw, could it?" Mm. It's like even they were. That yeah, was the, but yeah. So I think that is enough to say. Look, he shouldn't have been charged. He shouldn't have been suspended, and he's not. And thankfully, I think um, they got that one right. Uh, got a big shout out to um, Mo Fodawaka coming in. He's been outstanding for the Titans. Him and Tino yeah. together, like, yeah. geez, they try their balls off every single week. Well, he's uh, played before, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he has. Nice. Um, good player. Very good. Very young, too. I know. Very young. Both him and Tino, they're still, like, 23. I know. It's frightening where they can get to. Uh, mate, Luke Brooks says no to the Tigers. What do you reckon? I don't know. So I'm I'm a bit on the fence because like Tigers have obviously shown him an incredible amount of patience and yeah, but respect. <laughs> yeah, but they also but they're not. They going. also went after Mitch Moses. They also went after Sean Johnson, yeah. and then they didn't get either of those two, and went, "Oh, actually, Brooksy, can you stay?" Yeah. <laughs> well, he has been playing well. Yeah, and I know, and obviously it's situational, but I think it's a good. Um, and it's not confirmed yet. The Tigers might come back to the table, but I think a, a move for Brooks would be good. Yeah. Like he's been a long oh, time. I agree there. that the move will be good. Yeah. Well, What's Benji going to come out of retirement, is he? Not again. <laughs> for the Dolphins, he'll call Wayne up. <laughs> he's going to come out of retirement. But it gives, uh, gives. I think, yeah, it's a good opportunity for Brooks to, to go somewhere else. He was... He was wanting to go to Newcastle last year, but they they knocked that back. Mm. So I think it's a great move for him. He he needs a. I reckon he'll get a good payday. Eh? I to be honest, mate, I don't even think it's about the pay for him. Yeah, I no, I'm just saying. Yeah. I think well, I, I think no matter how he performs, there's enough footy in him yeah. left that people and halfbacks are very rare. Yeah, there's not many not many around, nah. and you know, obviously 
Ben Hunt, will he stay at the Dragons? Uh, I think Townsend is rumoured to be wanting to come back to Sydney. You've got a spot there at Canberra mm. now that Jackie whiten has gone, so he could play 5-8 there. Bulldogs are in the market for a seven. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's there's going to be plenty of options and almost that domino effect. Tigers should go heavy at Ben Hunt, surely. If he go, if he goes, yeah, yeah if he if he if goes, he goes. Um, yeah, I guess I'd be illegally bringing him right now. Mm. <laughs> well, he is under contract, so technically <laughs> yeah. no one's really allowed to speak to him. Yeah. But I guess we'll see. All right, now it's time for one of our favorite parts of the show: fans' feeling. Brought to you by Tui's. Fan feelings. Nothing more. Than How do you feel? How good is that intro? <laughs> wow. Props. We're stepping up a level, boys. We are stepping no, no, oh, Our listeners won't get to hear me and you dribble. <laughs> you know, I feel like, how good is that intro? I'm gonna, uh, I know, no one Love wants to head. hear us um, hear us sing. Uh, anyway, first question. Lads, my question is, do you think that there is currently too much niggle in the game? as everyone's too scared to actually throw a punch, especially seen as the NRL will always show clips of fights for State of Origin or the Battle of Brookvale or like the gory days. But I just feel like it's gone so far from that now. And do you think that's mainly based on trying to make it a more family-friendly image? Cheers. You want to go first on this one? Well, there's a multitude of questions. It was... There's questions within the questions. It was a lot. <laughs> uh, so is there too much niggle? Yes. Mm. Uh, but obviously that is a byproduct of the fact that a lot of people know you can't get punched in the face. Yeah. Um, why are they doing this? Um, I guess I get um, people's frustration that they sell our game based off illegal play. Yeah. That's the broadcasters. So they'll s- sell State of Origin... They sell the game on some of the big hits slash illegal hits and they look to the past. And is it to be a more family-friendly um, sport? I would say that's one of the main drivers behind it. Yep. But then again, I look at like other sports across the world and how they model their um, their rules and how they look to gain membership. Well, the NHL, they're a fa- they would be deemed as like a family-friendly sport with a little side of violence and punching. Yeah. Um, but they Americans are different, but <laughs> yeah, They're but they kids. and Canadians, yeah, Canadians. Um, they they don't allow any punching at like any other level, but it's only in the NHL it's allowed, which is strange. But look, I think that's one of the main reasons. Is uh, I remember, I, think, I can't remember who was telling me, but it was like it's not marketing marketing for like family friendly, but it's. What the because the mums choose a lot of the sports that yeah we, mums choose what's going on TV mums choose what sports the kids play so um and there's evidence to back that up before anyone calls me a sexist uh, this is well known in science yeah and um all the evidence suggests that and the sports are obviously act to that so they want to influence and make our game more appealing to those people so we get eyeballs on it well if the men made all the decisions would would have a little less of the population I'd say. Especially when it comes to choosing sports we play. I mean, uh, my mum uh, was pretty vocal on me, not wanting to get hurt in um, league, but obviously my dad loved it. But yeah, you I love watching you get hurt. Yeah, my mum loved watching me get hurt. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, I think you're you're totally right with the fact that for our game to be appealing to the younger generation, you need to make it appealing to the mother, and. Um, yeah, I think there is a bit too much niggling, mm. um, but I don't want to get punched in the face for niggling, so I think we're all good. <laughs> mm. Well, I guess what it really did come to a head on the weekend, didn't it, where you know, basically Jared and Spencer Lane, it was like, yeah, if that's in any other walk of life, that's, if, punch. The, if that's in a bar, can you imagine? Yeah. And everyone's just, ah, <laughs> no. Yeah. It's a bit weird. So it, I, I don't know what's the lesser of two evils to watch that or to watch them like just throw. I would have loved to watch them just throw. 
Mm. Because I guess anyone making decisions, like, does anyone see that and think, I want my kid to be a part of that? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think many mums are thinking that. You'd think it'd be worse if they... A lot of the dads, I'm... I'm I probably a lot of the dads think, oh, God, that's pathetic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially the older crew. But more, and he'd be like, oh, son, you should have got him. Yeah, well, that, yeah, no, <laughs> you but You should have like, just cracked him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's... That is the thought process of someone, but um, <laughs> all right. Next question Who was one of the toughest physically or mentally players you've trained with, or played with, or played against? Sounds like a boy, oh, Welsh guy. Well, I've got two. I'll go first. I've got two because obviously I've played at two clubs now, but like Dale Finucane, when I was at Melbourne, he was a madman, like. Mentally, physically, just every single rep you could do in a gym. He'd do every rep and he'd do it 100%. Like jog between sessions. Like I've got bench here and then after bench I've got chin-ups. So they're 20 metres apart. I'm not going to miss out on muscle fatigue. So I'm just going to jog from the bench straight to the chin-ups and then pump them out. Like, And then when he's injured, you go in the pool and he thinks he's Michael Phelps. <laughs> like, and he's just, yeah, just every rep. Just does it 100% and that's what I'd say mental toughness is. It's just giving your all. And then I'd say Victor Radley, now that I'm at the Roosters, like unbelievable trainer. Just – and like I don't think he's overly fit, but he's just so competitive that he won't – he refuses to lose any fitness to anyone. Like he's the fittest at the club bar none. Yeah. And yeah. Well – I echo your thoughts about Dale Fanuke and it was like Rambo was coming to training every day and you thought, oh God, don't pair just, me up with him in the wrestling. It just And every day I'd think, look at him and think, bro, he's got to break down eventually. Like he's got to have a mental breakdown. But then after you, like after training's done, he's just the most positive yeah. guy and, yeah. and he's got bipolar almost. Perhaps. Well, the, the person I was going to say is Cameron McInnes. Like talk about oh, like yeah. punching above your weight. Like, Every training session, it was like he was getting ready to go to war. <laughs> like, it's like, and I love, and he was so meticulous. He was just so meticulous. He wanted everything to be perfect, everything to be done right. Again, so intense. Like, yeah. they had to get new weights in, like, for Cam <laughs> McInnes. And, like, when you think of the sizes of him, you know, normally you see the dumbbell rack and it's like, you know, no need for anything after 50s. Oh, I would hate to like, see what them two are like, like together. Just bring, oh, all right. We, 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 seriously, they had to get, like, Bigger weights for Would Cam. That, uh, I, like, you know, like even doing like a dumbbell row. Like just, ah, <laughs> like Jesus Christ, Cam. Like, oh, I think, I think, I think they rocked up with like 65K dumbbells at one point. Basically, he was the only one that ever touched them. Jeez, he must be strong. Oh, mate, in, incredibly strong. But okay. just ev like attention to detail. Imagine him and Dale going at it. Oh, Jesus. Mate. Well, they do now at Cronulla. Exactly. I think that's they have what to I mean. separate them because they're just <laughs> it's going to war each and every Monday. Well, and and, the, and that's it. Obviously, I did did bag some of the um, performance stuff earlier in the game. Oh, earlier in the podcast. But yeah, there are those down days where you, and <laughs> then they 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 hate the down days. Yeah. Anyway, uh, last uh, we've got what time for one more. Hey, fellas, love the show. Uh, this question's for Cheese. Uh, seen all your work with uh, Budgie Smugglers. Just wondering if you know if they make uh, sizes for smaller packaged fellas. I'm just asking for a mate. <laughs> Cheers. Well, I'm, I'm not sure if they do or not, but I, I think. Um, I think it's not about that. I think it's about just being confident in your own body and even if it looks like it's it's not very prominent, just still rocking it. But um, I think they might have. I think I may have sent a few to um, Jared. Actually, he requested them. Um, and I think, yeah, little Harry Grant requested those ones as well. I think 32 in the front and 36 at the back, I think Harry was. So... <laughs> Um, and I've got a wardrobe full of them, so 
but those are custom made. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that bombshell, as we uh, face lit- litigation and uh, libel from Harry Grant and Jared Rhea Hargreaves, uh, <laughs> that's it from the Byron and the Jam and Cheese Show this week. Uh, thanks, boys. Thanks, man. <laughs>